What's up everyone, Jessica Dean here. I am super pumped for today's video drop. We are gonna take the image that we built last week, the Croc Hunter application that we pushed over into Docker Hub, and at the end of last week's video, we ran it in a Windows container. We're gonna take all of that and we're gonna deploy it over into Azure with, get this, just one and a half commands. And the best part is we are going to do this in a way that I have never, ever, ever done any demo whatsoever ever before. We are gonna do the entire demo, the entire video from my iPad. Let's have some fun. All right, to show you how easy it is to get started with Azure Container Instances, or ACI for short, as well as to show you how versatile ACI or Azure Container Instances actually is, I thought it would be super fun if we did this entire demo in this entire video from my iPad. So there's a few different ways that you can get started with Azure Container Instances. First, if you like clicking around and you like using a GUI or a graphical user interface like this, web portal here, you could click the hamburger icon in the top left, click that, go to create resource and search for container instance. And we'll go ahead and click on that. And then you can choose create. And then you start filling in some details. You need to put it in a resource group, which is how Azure organizes Azure resource objects. You give it a container name. You choose which region, the location that you want your container to, to run. You choose which image you use. Now, since we're gonna be deploying Croc Hunter, the image that we built together last week, and we're gonna deploy that out to the cloud, I would choose Docker Hub because that's where we pushed our image last week. In future videos, we'll learn how we can use Azure Container Registries and private registries. So you can see here, I'm given an image type. We deployed it to a public registry in Docker Hub. And then I would give it the, the image name, which is the same image name that we tagged and pushed. And then we ultimately ran on a Windows system at the end of last week's video. I could choose the operating system type. Do I want it to be Linux or do I want it to be Windows? I can choose the size, how much virtual CPU usage or memory, and I could change that. I could drill down into networking. But honestly, for me, this is too much clicking and I feel as though this takes too long. It is much simpler to actually get started right from the command line because you can deploy out your container or your application with one command, effectively making Azure Container Instances almost like Docker Run just in Azure. So to do this, we're going to use Azure Cloud Shell. You can access Azure Cloud Shell by clicking this little shell looking icon up at the top of your screen here in Azure, and it's gonna open up a terminal for you. Now, if this is your first time ever using it, it might prompt you for your environment preference, whether you want PowerShell or whether you want Bash, I think if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I always default over, over to Bash. But if at any point you ever wanted to change, you could just click this little arrow on the left-hand side here and choose Bash or PowerShell. Now, this isn't going to be a deep dive into how Azure Cloud Shell works or what you can do with it. Instead, I just want to show you why we're doing or why we're using Azure Cloud Shell with ACI or Azure Container Instances. First off, the Azure CLI, which is open source cross-platform, you can use it on Linux, Mac, and Windows. It is available uh, right by default in Azure Cloud Shell. I didn't have to configure it, I didn't have to install it. It already has my account set up, meaning I can dive right on in to running commands to create Azure resources. Now, if you click this little icon that almost looks like a folder, but really it's a piece of paper with a plus sign, it opens a new tab, which is going to allow us to use Azure Cloud Shell in full screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new resource group to put this new Croc Hunter Azure Container instance. So I'm gonna do AZ group create and make sure I spell create correctly. And then I have to give it a name. What do I want to call this group? I'm gonna call it ACI docker jd and then i have to put it in a location this is a region i typically default to east us even though i'm on the other side of the country you can do west europe you can do south central us west us wherever azure container instances is available and i'll have links to azure docs down below that show you which regions show you these commands walk you through everything i'm going to hit enter and this is going to create my group. Now you can also run this group command item potently. So it'll just make sure that that group exists. If not, it'll create it. So you can see that we have our resource group. Now we're ready to do our container create command or our Docker run command in the cloud. 
To do this, I'm going to do AZ container create. And I'm going to use this uh, backslash here to just drop down to another line so we can follow line by line of the flags we're using. The first flag I'm going to use is dash G. I could just as easily do dash dash resource dash group if I wanted to be super long. But honestly, I really just like being simple uh, and using shorthand. So we're going to do dash G for resource group, which is where this container is going to live. I'm going to give it the name of the resource group that we just created and then we're gonna go ahead and drop down to another line. Then I can do dash N. Now, if I wanted to, I could do dash dash name, which would be equivalent to dash N, and this is going to allow me to name my container. This is equivalent to the name command that we would use locally, or the name flag. Dash dash name equals Croc Hunter, or whatever we called it locally on our system, on our Mac or Windows system last week. For simplicity, I'm actually just gonna call this ACI Docker JD, will drop down to another line. Now we need to say which image we want to run in this container instance in Azure. To do that, we're just going to use dash dash image. Notice on how each thing is kind of very self-explanatory. I want to create a container. I want to put it in a group. I want to give it a name. And here's the image I wish to use. So I'm going to do JLDean slash, and this is going to be that image name from Docker Hub. We're going to give it croc hunter dash slim. And don't forget that we have to tag it, right? Because we didn't upload as latest, latest is not a best practice whatsoever. We tagged our image version one. We need to make sure that we say which version or which tag we wish to use. We're gonna drop down another time and we're actually gonna set up a fully qualified domain name. This is going to be a URL that we can go and access our application from anywhere in the world. So I'm gonna do dash dash DNS name dash label and now I'm gonna give it a DNS name. I'm going to call it JD Croc Hunter, and we can drop down. And this way, I will be able to access my application again from a fully qualified domain name. I don't have to set up any networking. I'll drop down, and the last thing I have to set up is the ports. This is similar, but not identical, and you'll see why in just a few moments. This is similar to us defining ports on our local system. So I'm going to say ports 8080, and I'm going to hit enter. This is now going to go out and create my container. It's going to put it in the resource group we defined. It's going to give it the name. It's going to pull down that image. It's going to set up DNS and our fully qualified domain name. And it's going to do all of this in less than a minute. It honestly takes about 35 to 45 seconds. It has a lot of configuration it's doing in the back end. But you can go over into your portal, which I already have my portal open in another tab, and I have my resource group open. I can click refresh and see if the container instance has been created yet. It doesn't look like it has, so I'll give it just a few more moments. And there we go, we now have our container instance. In fact, I can drip back over into our cloud shell here. You can see that the command still is running. It might be finishing up some housekeeping items. But even while the command is running in the background, we can drop down into this container instance resource. We can see the operating system type. We can see the public IP address that has been assigned to it. We can see the fully qualified domain name that we have been given. I can copy that to my clipboard. I can see how much memory my application is using, how much network bytes have been received and transmitted. And over here on the left hand side, I can drop down into containers. I can see now that my container has deployed. It says that it is running. I can see the events. It has pulled my image. It has started the container or started running the container and it has fully created it. I can see the properties. I can see the name, the image itself that I'm using, the port, the CPU usage, the memory, everything that we were supposed to manually define and click around in the portal, we were able to create with just one command. And if I wanted to change the CPU or memory, there's a flag for that. Again, all the links will be down below for the documentation. I can even assign volumes to container instances and environment variables, and we'll learn about that in future videos. I can see the logs of the application. I can see that the container has started and the application has started. It is listening on port 8080. I can even connect, and this is really helpful for developers. If you wanted to troubleshoot and debug any issues happening in your container, you can choose your startup command. Remember, our base image is using Alpine. I don't have bash installed in the container by default, but I do have sh. So I can use sh and hit connect. And after a few moments, this will connect so I can start running commands. 
You can see here I have dropped down into my working directory, which we learned about in last week's video. I can do an LS and I see my Crack Hunter application. I see my static folder. I can change directories over into static. I can do another list command and see all of my static files. But now I know you're wondering, okay, this is, this is cool. I, I have now deployed out my application in the cloud. Now let's go play Croc Hunter in the cloud, right? That's what everyone wants to do. So we're gonna open a new tab. We're gonna paste this in and hit enter. And you would think it would load super quickly, but it's not. Instead, it's just spinning and it looks like maybe the container failed. Maybe it's still actually starting up. We could click on over here to our terminal but nope, it looks like we actually, everything got provisioned successfully. We have an IP address, our command finished running. So what could make this hang? Well, as of the time of this video, Azure Container Instances does not actually support port mapping or port forwarding, which is why I said when we define ports is kind of like what we do locally, but it is not identical. Locally last week, we learned how we could take port 8080 in the container and route it over to 8081 or any available port on our system. Because we're going through HTTP and we're going through just a regular URL, we are trying to access our application through port 80, but we haven't mapped port 80 on our container instance, which is kind of like our, our local system, we haven't mapped it over to inside the container port 8080. So we actually have to access our application on port 8080, and then we'll be able to play Croc Hunter and continue to live out our dreams hunting crocodiles, which you can see works beautiful. I can still be just as dangerous and I can play it from my iPad. You can even see the host name that I have right down here is a very long verbose, that is my, my Azure Container Instance name. Now I understand that this might not be ideal, right? In, in a lot of cases, you're not gonna wanna have to access your production application by appending a port, especially if you're working with languages that you haven't defined dynamic ports. If you have your node application serving on port 3000, or you have an application serving on 5000, or in this instance, go with port 8080, you're gonna wanna route that accordingly. Now you could play with Nginx and Apache and you could do some fun and creative things with networking. But as developers, no one wants to do that. So on our next video, we're going to learn how we can actually update this and make our application more dynamic so we can actually scale it and allow it to be used in any cloud, in any environment, with any port that is needed. All right, so there you have it. That's how easy it is to get started with Azure Container Instances and bring your containerized application over into the cloud. In our next video, we're going to dive even deeper. We're going to continue to build the skill set. We're going to learn how we can structure our application and our Docker files so we don't have to worry about appending that port at the end of our URL. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing to the channel, tapping that bell notification, and sharing the video so that we can all learn together and help others. Most importantly, thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will see you next time.